the Kronecker Delta, named after the German mathematician Leopold Kronecker, who lived in the 19th century, who kept customary to the time short hair and strong German moustache. And according to Kronecker, the delta function he envisaged is defined as follows. Delta ij is 1 if i is equal to j, and 0 if i is not equal to j. So you realize that this is in matrix form. In 2D, you would write this as 1, 0, 0, 1, which is just the 2D identity matrix. In 3D, the Kronecker delta is the 3 by 3 identity matrix. And if you operate with the Kronecker delta on a tensor A, it's the same as multiplying this tensor by the identity matrix, and you are just left with A. Now, in index notation, when you act with the Kronecker delta on a vector u, you write this as delta i j u j, which in 3D, if we write out the individual terms, it's just delta i1 u1 plus delta i2 u2 plus delta i3 u3. So, for example, consider the second element here, say i equals 2. In that case, delta 2j uj is simply delta 2 1 u1 plus delta 2 2 u2 plus delta 2 3 u3. And from our definition of the Kronecker delta up here, we realize that the diagonal elements are 0, so we just find delta 2j uj is equal to u2. So the j is transformed to 2, i.e. the j becomes the value that the i took. So in general, we write this as delta i j uj is equal to ui. So the Kronecker delta flips the index. And there are two examples that I just want to mention quickly here. The first one is the special case of delta ii. So now we have repeated indices, so the Einstein summation is understood. So this corresponds to delta 1, 1 plus delta 2, 2 plus delta 3, 3. And each one of these is 1. So this really is 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. In general, in nd, n-dimensional cases, delta ii in n dimensions is simply n. So in two dimensions, delta ii is 2. And the other example I wanted to mention here is if you have the partial derivative of the position vector, delta xi, in space, delta xj, then this also is delta ij, reduces to the Kronecker delta.